Hi, in this video I'm going to help guide you through a standard maximization problem using the simplex method. I want to note I'll be using my simplex method app which is free and available for iPhones and iPads. You can use this app to help calculate the new simplex tables or you can use the hints to help choose the correct pivot elements and or row operations. I also have a simplex method flowchart. The links for both the app and the flowchart can be found in the description below. Anyhow, on with the problem. The problem we're going to do is the following. Maximize p equals 50x plus 54y subject to the following inequalities. x plus 2y less than or equal to 8, 3x plus 2y less than or equal to 16, and then x and y being both greater than or equal to 0. Now this page is just confirming the problem, making sure that we've entered everything in correctly. The flowchart says that if we are maximizing with all less than or equal to signs, then the first thing we do is add select variables. Select variables are variables we add to the inequality so that we can make the less than or equal to sign into an equals. We typically use letters u, v, w, etc. Uh, we can also use s1, s2, s3, where s stands for slack. Our first inequality, x plus 2y less than or equal to 8, is now going to be x plus 2y plus u equals 8. The second inequality, 3x plus 2y less than or equal to 16, is now 3x plus 2y plus v equals 16. We don't do anything to the x and y being greater than or equal to 0. The next step is to rewrite the objective function p equals 50x plus 54y. We do this by bringing the x and y terms over to the left side with the p. It's now going to be negative 50x minus 54y plus p equals 0. The simplex table is broken up into three parts. The first part is the very top. It contains all the variables in the problem. So that's going to be the x, y, u, v, p, and then the constant column. The middle section is all the coefficients from the inequalities and slack variables. The first was x plus 2y plus u equals 8. So the coefficients are 1, 2, 1, 0, 0, 8. Make sure you place zeros for the variables that are not in the problem. The second is 3x plus 2y plus v equals 16. The coefficients are 3, 2, 0, 1, 0, 16. The bottom section of the table is for the objective function, negative 50x minus 54y plus p equals 0. The coefficients are negative 50, negative 54, 0, 0, 1, and 0. Now we're ready to start. We need to identify the pivot element. Now according to the hints, we need to check if there are any negative numbers in the constant column. Now since there are not any negatives, we look for the smallest negative in the bottom row. Negative 54 is the smallest negative. This means our pivot column is column 2. Now we need to determine which row we use. We do this by calculating the constant column number divided by the row number. For row 1, that's 8 divided by 2 equals 4. Now row 2, it's 16 divided by 2 equals 8. The pivot row will be the row with the smallest positive, and positive is important, positive ratio. This means our pivot element is in row 1, column 2. Next, we need to scale the row so the pivot element is a 1. We do this by multiplying by the reciprocal of 2. So our row operation is going to be 1 half times row 1. And we store that back into row 1. Make sure you multiply every number in row 1 by 1 half. Our new row is going to be 1 half, 1, 1 half, 0, 0, 4. Now we need to make the pivot column into a unit column. A unit column is a column with a 1 and the rest are zeros. This means we need to make that 2 into a 0 and the negative 54 into a 0. We can use the following steps to come up with the operation to do just that. What row do you want to change? So let's start with row 2. What is the pivot row? Well, that's row 1. 
And what number cancels that 2? Well, here's a hint. It's always going to be the negative of what number is shown. So that means we're going to use negative 2. So now our operation is row 2 minus 2 times row 1. Now the app will calculate this automatically, but if you want to do this by hand, you do the following. Write all the numbers from row 2 below row 2. Then write all the numbers from the pivot row under row 1. Now don't forget to include the negative 2 that's going to show up in every operation. Evaluate each of these. 3 minus 2 times a half is 2. 2 minus 2 times 1 is 0. 0 minus 2 times a half is negative 1. 1 minus 2 times 0 is 1. 0 minus 2 times 0 is 0. And finally, 16 minus 2 times 4 is 8. So let's check it with the app. We have row 2 minus 2 times row 1. It looks like everything matches up. Perfect. Now we need to change row 3. So what row do we want to change? What is our pivot row? And what cancels the negative 54? Our row operation is going to be row 3 plus 54 times row 1. So write all the numbers below row 3 and all the numbers in row 1 below row 1. Don't forget to add the 54. And when you calculate, you're going to get negative 23, 0, 27, 0, 1, 216. Now let's go ahead and check it with the app. So row 3 plus 54 times row 1. Looks like everything matches up. Congrats, you have completed one iteration of the simplex method. Now we continue to do this until there are no negatives in the constant column and no negatives in the bottom row. But since there's still a negative in the bottom row, we have to do another round of the simplex method. We start by finding the pivot column. Now column 1 is the pivot column because it has the smallest negative in the bottom row. To find the pivot row, we calculate the ratios. 4 divided by a half equals 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Now row 2 has the smallest positive ratio, so it's going to be the pivot row. Our pivot element is in row 2, column 1. Next, we need to scale the pivot element. We do this by multiplying row 2 by a half. That gives us our 1. Using the app, it becomes 1, 0, negative 1 half, 1 half, 0, 4. Now we need to make it a unit column. Because these two numbers are not 0, we have to do the following. So what row do I want to change? What is our pivot row? And what number cancels a positive 1 half? The new row is going to be 0, 1, 3 fourths, negative 1 fourth, 0, and 2. All right, now on to row 3. So what row do I want to change? What is our pivot row? And what cancels negative 23? So our bottom row is now 0, 0, 31 halves, 23 halves, 1, 308. And again, if you are doing this by hand or using a graphing or scientific calculator, you would just write out all the numbers in row 3, write out all the numbers in row 1, and manually calculate each one. Nope. We've now completed another iteration of the simplex method. Notice there are no negatives in the constant column, and there are no more negatives in the bottom row. This means we are actually done, and we can read our answer. Now we read the answer by first determining if the variable's column is a unit column. If it's not a unit column, we call it non-basic or junk column. I call any of the variable columns a junk column if it's not a unit column. Now x's column is a unit column. So what you're going to do is you're going to find the 1, you're going to scan across to the constant column, and that's what x equals. x equals 4. Now y's column is also a unit column. So find the 1, scan across to the constant column, and that gives us y equals 2. Now just an FYI, you can see both u and v are junk columns, i.e. they're not unit columns. Now junk columns get an automatic value of 0. 
Now, however, u and v are not really part of the original problem, so we just ignore them. But if your variable x or y were a junk column, then they would have a value of 0. And finally, p is a unit column, and it always should be a unit column. You read across, and you get p equals 308. Now, the final answer is going to be we have a maximum of 308 at the point x equals 4, y equals 2. Anyways, thanks for watching the video. Again, you can find the flowchart or a link to the app in the description. Good luck.